Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis, and today I want to talk about getting perfect color from your Olympus camera. So there's a three steps that I sort of think about, or three different areas where I think about getting perfect color from my Olympus cameras. Um, and I want to start this whole thing with a huge disclaimer and say that neutral color or accurate color is not really what I'm after. What I really want is pleasing color or color that matches my vision. But starting from a place where we have neutral color, being able to achieve neutral color in the beginning is a great place to be in terms of workflow and it's a great way to get consistent results um, in the end. So when I'm out in the field, I'm often trying to capture very neutral pictures so that when I get them into the computer, it makes my life that much easier. Okay, so step one in getting great color from your Olympus camera is white balance. And white balance is a really big subject, but at a base level, what white balance is, is your, abil your camera's ability to balance the um, color of the camera for the light source that you're under. Um, every white source of light in your life, whether it be incandescent bulbs in your house, uh, fluorescent lights at work, um, <laughs> or um, bright daylight, or even open shade, is a slightly different color. And you know, I can actually kind of see that as I'm looking at it, but um, the camera wants to or helps you kind of take that light source and make it the neutral light source in your picture. So let's say you're shooting um, incandescent lights inside, okay, regular light bulbs. Those tend to be kind of orange. And so if you tell the camera uh, to set the white balance, set the, ca the camera's white balance to incandescent, it takes that orange light and it says, okay, that orange light that I'm seeing is white. And so it will bias the color and give you more natural um, tones, more natural colors in your image, and so on and so forth for every type of light in your, in your life. So if you are out shooting under open shade and your photos are turning out very blue, then you want to set the camera's white balance to open shade um, and that will give you a much warmer picture and will look much more natural in the end. Okay, so how to set the white balance in your camera. Uh, most of the time, you know, a lot of beginners start out just using auto white balance all the time. Our cell phones, for example, pretty much only have auto white balance. And maybe there's app, I'm sure there's apps for changing it, but uh, most of the time you're just using auto white balance. So to set the white balance in your camera, however, is super simple. Um, one of the easiest ways to do it is just from the super control panel. So you just turn the camera on, hit the OK button once. And if you scroll through um, the white balance settings, right up here. Let me do that again for you. So white balance is right here on the top and I have it set to auto at the moment. If I scroll into this settings down by hitting OK, I can see sunny and shady and shadow and incandescent and fluorescent and you know uh, even an underwater setting if you need to bias out for the blue water for example in your pool. Um, flash white balance is for shooting studio strobes and then there's a set of custom white balances. So picking one of those sort of preset white balances is a great place to start. And you always want to pick the white balance for the dominant light source that's on your subject, the main light or the key light in your picture. Now, one of the ways to kind of get around some tricky lighting scenarios, like for example, let's say you're in a room that has some tungsten or some incandescent light bulbs on, and then you have a big window and you have a um, you know, a big red wall on one side. You're gonna see lots of different colors of light coming at you. And so maybe what you wanna do is set a custom white balance. Uh, and so Olympus makes that really simple for you. If you scroll through your white balance settings until you get to these, um, these preset, these, um, these white balance settings here with this little symbol with the two little uh, triangles and a little uh, rectangle on top, you can actually set a custom white balance. So if you pick that and you hit info once and you point the camera at a white sheet of paper or anything that you have that's white and make sure it's in the same light that you're about to shoot in, um, you'll just uh, take one picture and then you can set the one touch white balance. And then you just go in and make sure you pick that as your white balance. And now all of a sudden you have set a very custom white balance for the space that you're in. And so that is a great way to work if you're in some in a tricky lighting scenario. So oftentimes if I run inside a church or something like that, even if they have um, you know inc incandescent light bulbs lighting up the church, oftentimes they're a lot more orange than the ones I have at home. So I will go ahead and set a one touch white balance for that lighting condition. So anytime it's tricky, one touch white balance, awesome place to go. And those are actually stored in the camera for recall. So anytime you need to go back to it, if you're working throughout a day, like at a wedding, you can set them up as one of these four uh, one touch white balances and you can go back in there and totally recall that setting from earlier. 
Um, the other setting that's in white balance that's actually really helpful is um, to set the specific Kelvin value of the uh, camera. So this is like the manual, manual way of setting white balances. And Kelvin values are just color temperatures of light. Um, so you can go and look at a scale somewhere, but basically the lower the Kelvin number, the more orangey the light is, the higher the Kelvin value, the more blue the light is. So uh, neutral uh, would be like daylight, and that's like around 5,500 Kelvin. And then incandescent lighting might be down at 3,000, and open shade might be up at 6,500 or 7,000. So you can learn those Kelvin values and you can dial them in, but this is a great way if you know what you want to use to dial a specific uh, setting into the camera under Kelvin values. Um, it's not a setting that I use a lot, um, I tend to use the one touch white balances or the presets more often, but if you find it useful, then it's totally there for you. Okay, so now you've got the right white balance set for the camera. Now the next step is to pick a picture profile. So this is where really Olympus color kind of comes into play because these picture profiles are biasing the color of your picture uh, based on um, Olympus's sort of um, preferences or your preferences for the setting you pick in the picture profile. So picture profiles are set again from the super control panel way over here on the upper right. And so these are the sort of standard picture profiles. I mean, they include eye enhance, um, vivid, natural, muted, portrait, monochrome, custom, and so on and so forth. Um, even the underwater one. <laughs> so uh, I usually tend to set mine on neutral, but what is this really doing? Let's take a look. So in a studio lighting conditions where I am ultra um, in control of the, the color of the light and the consistency of the light, I shot a series of pictures of my daughter um, just to show you what the picture profile is doing all by itself. So the white balance in all these pictures has been set manually is right on the button. And so the only thing that's affecting the color in these pictures is the picture profile. So up here, we're gonna just gonna look through these. Here is the eye enhance, here's the vivid, Here's the, uh, I believe the next one was natural. Let me just make sure I'm right. Yeah, natural, and then muted, and uh, portrait, and then of course monochrome. So you can see that a lot of the color is being pushed around by the picture profile. So picking the right one and understanding it is key to getting great color. Um, so, you know, for me, I enhance is, um, is one of the ones that sort of like auto white balance. It's sort of analyzing the scene and trying to understand what it is you're taking pictures of and biasing color that way. Um, I tend to, to see in this picture profile most often that people tend to get really oversaturated. Um, and maybe it looks great for snapshots or for some vacation photos or things like that, but um, even more so, I find that this picture profile and the vivid picture profile work really well for landscapes and cityscapes and nightscapes and all kinds of things that don't include people. Um, when you're looking at shooting pic people, people pictures, um, I find that the uh, natural and muted picture profiles um, actually are the ones that I prefer. Um, even the portrait picture profile tends to be a little bit punchy for my taste, but it's really important that you go through these and pick the one that you really feel looks best for your work. Um, and this, of course, is mostly affecting the JPEGs that the camera is creating. But if you're using JPEGs for backup or using them for finals, it's really important to understand what the camera is doing. So I tend to use the muted picture profile. And those are kind of the standard. Uh, one of these picture profiles has to get applied to any JPEG that the camera creates um, and, of course, um, is embedded into um, your RAW files for preview purposes. Okay, so what about getting beyond that? Um, everyone knows that like in the Pen F and in, um, and in fact every Olympus camera, um, there is a whole set of picture profiles that have to do with creating very stylized images that are more like a finished JPEG. Um, this might be where I'm going after I get the raw file home, I want to get to this sort of finished look in the end. And it'll be my custom mix of things that I do to photos. But Olympus has given us um, and everyone a whole set of tools for creating finished JPEGs right inside the camera. So let's look at all these different picture profiles. So here I'm just gonna scroll through real quickly. You can see that there is a lot of options um, from your, you know, your sort of bleach bypasses to your sepia tones um, to everything in between. Olympus has a lot of different options in here for creating a stylized JPEG. So one of the uh, fun things that you can do if you're out on the road or you're on vacation and you wanna create some finished JPEGs for sharing from your phone or uh, you know, putting on Facebook quickly and easily without having to use a computer 
you can go through and pick one of these picture profiles and create that JPEG and maybe also save a raw file for processing when you get home. So if you go through here and shoot a whole series of these images like I did, then you can go through and start to figure out which ones you might actually like. And you can actually apply these to your photos and then you can see them while you're in the field and see which one's working for you as well that way. But um, having a whole ramp of the same subject does let you understand kind of what's happening um, behind the scenes. So those picture profiles are actually on the EM1 Mark II in the same place as the standard ones. If you just keep scrolling over, you will eventually get to Art 1, Art 2, Art 3, so on and so forth, Bleach Bypass and Sepia. So they're all there at your fingertips and certainly a very um, fun thing to do or fun thing to play around with at some point. And maybe you find that um, that is a great starting point for your particular look. So you could apply that picture profile, then bring it into your phone, for example, and do some editing to it and create something that's all your own. Okay. So that's done. Okay, so let's talk about RAW because I think most of us or a lot of us are shooting RAW files and a lot of people think that maybe you're off the hook if you shoot a RAW file. Hold on guys, one second. Okay, but here's the thing. RAW files um, are biased by the white balance that you shoot for a couple of different things. Number one, if your white balance is radically off, it will actually affect the exposure of the picture. If you're using the histograms, for example, to set your exposure or you're looking at where the highlights and shadows are falling, that is hugely dependent on your white balance. So it's very important that you get your white balance close to correct or exactly correct in camera if you wanna use those tools for determining how to expose your picture. The second thing is that if you get your raw files shot and they're at some crazy or wrong or, incon or inconsistent white balance and you bring them into the computer, setting the white balance from a unknown point to where you want it to be can be very tricky. You have a couple different sliders, for example, in Lightroom, one dealing with temperature and one dealing with tint to try and figure out what it is that you want. Um, and sometimes it works great. You can sometimes find something black or white and white balance off of that or you can use the presets to kind of get close and then make tweaks. And yeah, we've all done that. But um, sometimes it actually gets very tricky in the sense that there's a lot of different competing light sources and you're really not sure where to go. If you have the, um, you know, the one touch white balance set, um, then that can be a great starting point because that will already have some information stored for you in terms of balancing it out. The other way that I do it is using a tool like this one. This is the uh, Color Checker Passport. Okay, and what this little device does is it allows me to um, do a couple different things. It allows me to um, get a, a white balance set from one of these preset swatches here on the top. And even more so than a one touch white balance, it has some settings on it. I'll try and get a close up of it here. It has some settings on it where you can actually bias it for different skin tone values and for different landscape values. And so it will help you warm up or cool down your image in some very nice ways. And so um, if you're using this particular tool on the top here with a little face icon, you're seeing um, white balances like neutral is the first one and then warmer, 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 warmer. And then on the uh, white balance side, on the landscape side, right in the middle is the neutral one. And then you have a couple of warmer settings and a couple of cooler settings. So this actually works really well if you are shooting in, uh, you have time to shoot a test picture, a picture where you're kind of shooting like this and then uh, shoot all the rest of your photos, you can actually use these uh, white balance presets um, that's built into this tool to give you very consistent color throughout the process during raw development. You can also shoot this and then create a custom profile for just the lighting scenario that you're in using software from X-Rite who makes the Color Checker Passport. So it's a really nice little thing, a little handy little thing to have in your bag. And I know there's other things out there that also work um, that um, you know, Weibull and others make that um, do it close to the same thing. But having one of these tools in your bag, definitely a time saver, especially if you're shooting a lot of photos under a very consistent lighting and you wanna have your pictures turn out all the same. Okay, and then um, one other thing to check out, we're just gonna jump to the computer for this last part here. We're gonna talk about um, a new tool that Adobe has given us in Camera Raw, and that is um, you can actually use picture profiles built into Camera Raw now. So if I grab these two guys here, these two pictures of Vivian, and we edit this in, we'll just use Photoshop tonight for this. 
you can actually go into Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe has given us some wonderful uh, matching presets for Olympus Color. So if um, we go through here, first let me show you how to use um, the Color Checker Passport. If I grab that image and I grab my white balance tool, either in Lightroom or in um, Camera Raw, and I touch the neutral white balance for portraits, here it will actually set the white balance exactly neutral for this picture. And then if I pick one of the other ones, you can see that it's going to make slight adjustments for making the picture warmer and warmer and warmer, which may be closer to what your tastes are. Once I'm happy, I just grab both of them and I go to sync settings uh, for whatever pictures I have shot under this lighting scenario. And now all my pictures are a perfect match. But let's say we're here with this picture and we wanna look at some of these picture profiles. Right here, um, kind of as a standard in profiles, you have the Adobe options, which are like landscape portrait and so on. But right on this little four picture, on these little four grid box, you, if you scroll down, you'll find my favorite section, which is called camera matching. And if you go into that section of picture profiles, these four picture profiles are actually built around the idea of matching what we get from Olympus Color. So if I pick muted or natural here, it's gonna try and give me uh, the same picture that I would have gotten shooting that picture profile in my Olympus camera. So guys, those are some notes on getting great color from your camera. Please hit me up with questions um, in the comments and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one.